On July 7, 1993, at her home in Gray, Louisiana, Donna Fortenberry was reminded that through a child's eyes, the world often appears to be completely safe. Around 12, Giselle and Olivia begged me to put a video on. And they sat down to start to watch it for about 15 or 20 minutes, and then they hopped up and said, let's go outside. It was super hot outside. It's so hot that it's unbearable. Whenever you would open up the front door, the heat would throw you back. So for the first time, I closed my front door. It was kind of quiet, so I said, gee, this is a good opportunity for me to pick up the phone and call my friend. Giselle and Olivia, they're both happy kids. Always busy, always into things, always curious about what's going on, what makes things tick. 13-year-old Travis Malbrew lived a few doors away. I was playing basketball with my friend. I saw Glenn's over there and saw him playing in the trunk. But I didn't feel like getting those kids in trouble. Okay. And we were talking for a little while, and it felt really strange that I hadn't been interrupted yet by the girls. Giselle! Olivia! I started to call for them. Giselle! Olivia! And I didn't hear any, any response. Olivia! I said, well, maybe they're trying to play a bad joke on me, but just not answering, and maybe they're in the backyard. There was no one. Giselle! And I thought to myself, I said, this is not good. Olivia! And I was trying to keep a grip on myself from panicking. Donna called her neighbor, Debbie Daigle, for help. Donna called. Go over there and sit with the baby, because you can't find the girls. Travis, you seen the two girls? I was some playing in the trunk. In the trunk? I ran down the steps at this point, hoping that I would open the trunk and find them sitting up crying, glad that Mommy found them. Oh, my God! But when I opened it and found them just laying there, both bodies beaded with sweat. Jackie, you got called 911! It's like, my God, I just had a brand new baby, and now I have to bury two kids. Acadian Ambulance Dispatcher Jill Stelly took the call. They got the two kids out, but they don't know if they're breathing or not. No, one of them's not breathing. Come on, hurry. It was a call two children in the trunk of a car. We don't know how long they've been back there. It was probably 100 degrees that day, and you can multiply that being in a trunk. I knew there was a danger of heat stroke. concerns were to keep them breathing and keep their heart going until the medics got there and also to try to cool them off as much as we could. Does anybody know how long they've been there? Huh? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Are either one of them awake? No. Oh, so, uh, um, they're both unconscious. Oh, God. Okay, lay them both on their backs, okay? On their backs. Yeah, on their back. And tilt their heads back a little bit just to help them breathe. Okay. Oh, thank God. Oh. And they wasn't waking up. Oh, God. Oh, dear God. That got me pretty scared, you know, because I couldn't see them girls dying in the front of me. The sheriff's deputy is here. Okay. Oh, Jesus' name. Oh. What is your name? Donna. 
I began to pray in tongues. And I knew that their survival was going to rely on my prayers. Giselle, I did not feel her breathing, and I did not hear a heartbeat, and I began to panic. And I said, oh my God, Debbie, I think she's dead. Shriver volunteer fire EMT Scott Cazalot lived just down the street. The children were both unconscious. The youngest girl, Olivia, had a pulse and was breathing. Giselle was not breathing. Somebody grabbed the other one. She didn't have much time. Okay, just try to take some slow, deep breaths, okay? They're going to take good care of her, okay? The ambulance is here, too. Okay, let me go. Okay, Don, they're going to take good care of her, okay? I know. You did good. Thanks. Bye-bye. After I hung up that phone, I just took a deep breath and, and just pray they're going to be okay. Three-year-old Olivia and five-year-old Giselle were taken by Air Med helicopter to Terrebonne General Medical Center, where their father, Johnny Lee Fortenberry, met up with his family. I saw my children lying on those stretchers, and it was like, oh, God. And these children got such a long life ahead of them. Why them? Why not me? They both were treated by emergency physician Stephen Maloney. They were under extreme heat exhaustion, bordering on heat stroke. It's a high likelihood that they'd been in that trunk in the conditions that they were another 20 to 30 minutes. Their body temperatures would have gone up extremely high and, and they would have died of heat stroke. Okay, babe, we've got to keep that oxygen on your face, okay? It's really important to keep it on. Olivia and Giselle were released from the hospital the next day without any permanent injuries. Since this has happened, I realized the danger of not locking the car. I never thought that they would have ever gotten in the trunk. That was one place that I would have never, ever looked for them. I just wasn't on my toes enough. I'm going a little bit faster. Slow down. Slow down a little bit. Giselle closed the trunk. And that was scary. I wanted to get out. Yeah. I'm not going to get in the trunk no more. Slow down, Olivia. Slow down, baby. I got wonderful kids. I got the best kids in the world. But they're going to get into stuff. I'm more protective. I just thank God every day that I didn't lose my children. Good. Next. It was like, God, this is like the movies. It didn't seem real. 